Well, rather interesting possible megaliths and ancient sites and the stones here, all the red stones, but not just that, it looks like also mounds, what could clearly be pyramid uh, mounds that definitely need LIDAR on them at the very least. And the geology, geography of this area is just something else. And each one of these being a small car-sized uh, giant red ball. Uh, lots of them broken apart uh, in that area, but it was several uh, valleys and, well, what can only be described as mounds, pyramidal mound hills, uh, that these um, balls were on. And uh, here you can see another what looks like a step mound site and the giant red heavy balls on top nonetheless, not buried like we see in so much stuff that, uh, you know, archeological sites that are way deeper, way uh, more buried than they should be. Yet in this Red Rock Cooley, Southern Alberta site, it actually uh, is the opposite where these anomalous giant uh, red sandstone balls uh, are actually on the top of the soil and the surrounding terrain. Um, and let's see here what other pictures I have of it up as I do have a couple, not sure uh, if it's in this role, but we'll find it before uh, the stream is done. Uh, up close of some of them split open and that uh, they literally uh, have concentric circles uh, throughout them uh, when they're cracked open. Here another what looks like perfect mound of course right like oh yeah this isn't a pyramid ancient site. No yes I suspect this is uh, ancient megaliths in southern Alberta. Uh, pyramid site and uh, if these aren't convinced seeing as uh, possible mounds wait till I go back to Drumheller Alberta and document the layered mounds there that uh, literally litter the entire um, river valley and town slash I guess maybe city of Drumheller uh, world famous for the Royal Terrell Museum of uh, Dinosaurs, and I myself having a cryptid experience uh, in downtown Drumheller uh, at 3.30 in the morning one night when I was at my friend's place. Uh, don't care if you believe me or not, I experienced what I experienced. I even pegged it with uh, my laser uh, that I had on me at the time, and it was cruising, it was high up, and it was big. Uh, whether, you know, dragon or thunderbird or pterodactyl, petrodactyl, something, it was just huge, and I... The hair, just even right now, again, stands up on the back of my neck every time I think about it. When you're in that moment of you feeling like you are prey, you are being hunted. When you're in that situation, your instincts, uh, adrenaline, everything kicks in and the shivers that you get that, you know, you're aware that your life is uh, in the, uh, well, in peril, right? And this thing, it was just nuts. It blocked out the moon. It was crazy crazy uh, and but yeah that's uh for another day another episode we will get into all of the cryptids and shout out to frankie at new west reset uh hooking me up with this cryptids uh book right here that we will be doing a feature episode together with the new west reset and go into the cryptids of western north america and 
I will go into detail my own experiences with what I believe were Sasquatch amongst other uh, things like I just spoke of with the petrodactyl, pterodactyl, dragon, dinosaur, thunderbird, whatever the heck it was. It was definitely hunting and it was in Drumheller. But this is not Drumheller we're looking at, though the Badlands of Alberta actually stretch from, uh, oh, good day, Isaac Amor, brother uh, from another mother tuning in from Facebook. Good sir. Um, if you're down, uh, Isaac, next summer, we'll have to do some camping and exploring when I go back to these sites, if you're up for it, and for all, actually, try to do a YouTube uh, meetup camping exploration site tour of Southern Alberta of uh, Writing on Stone Park, which is the uh, Milk River slash southernmost um, Badlands uh, border of uh, Montana and the U.S., uh, that extends these badlands all the way up. I believe it's 400 kilometers uh, from south to north. Uh, I could be mistaken, but that sounds correct. Uh, and so it goes from uh, this Milk River writing on stone up through uh, this Red Rock Coulee that we're currently looking at uh, through Medicine Hat, Medicine Hat Badlands, all the way up to... Drum Heller, Alberta, and even further uh, north. Just massive, extensive, insane. Uh, what are labeled these badlands? Uh, they're pretty desolate, barren looking. Like they, they're not lush by any means. I do believe that the majority of it is actually uh, arid and classified technically as desert and that nothing really grows through these. Yet, uh, in my explorations of, um, I did, I am starting to find a couple in the Red Rock Coulee area, but more so it was everywhere in the Medicine Hat Badlands Guardians with all of the terracing for uh, what looked like uh, ancient usage of, um, agriculture of the water and storing it better and just agricultural farming on a much uh, more harmonic and efficient manner uh, than what we do today. And that potentially these uh, once bad or now badlands were once, uh, you know, lush or at least heavily densely populated and well-farmed um, areas. And my apologies having to go back and forth to different computers as I still haven't been able to get StreamYard to let me log back into my main uh, laptop yet. It's just a pain in the butt, but we're making do. And it, it what gets me on this is how they're literally resting on the top ridge, like on top, not just on top of the soil, but also on like the very top of these uh, geology here and the hills slash possible mounds, whatever they are, just anomalous it, it is anomalous in its features and for those uh, unaware i actually did three years of post-secondary education minoring or sorry majoring in geology and geography so i do have a bit of a background scientific background in this and uh i, I find these so much of the official story uh, just BS and impossible. Yeah, right. And well, 
And what we speculate, Isaac, uh, if you've seen, and actually what I will be playing a segment of coming up with the Dutch Synths uh, first interview, but uh, with Stellium 7 joins in, he looks into this uh, Titanology and what uh, we believe, if uh, you believe in the five um, ages of the sun and like that. There were, you know, giants in those days beforehand and possible titans before that, that these could also be biogeology as in giant uh, seeds or giant eggs potentially left over or, uh, you know, giant bowling balls from uh, titans themselves. Who knows? Uh, but that uh, what seems to be uh, evident in all of these Badlands sites uh, throughout North America, not just in Canada, but also the U.S., uh, Utah, uh, uh, Nevada, Colorado, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, um, all, everywhere that they call these Badlands, that they look like they've had some sort of mass catastrophe, whether it was like nuclear or a plasma, uh, some sort of uh, insane past heat and destruction that uh, hit it. And now we are getting into uh, the actual Badland Guardian site of uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta. And I did take a sample to get tested and to look at, uh, Isaac, to answer your question. They do uh, seem and they claim to be of sandstone, but it's there's a few features. I'm going to have to do a full episode on it, and I'll most likely be doing it with Wandering Wolf. Shout out to Mike, uh, Michael at Wandering Wolf Productions epic epic channel and work that he does visiting every ancient site uh anomalous sites around north america uh, south america uh asia middle east it just he's been all over and looking forward to catching up with him and he was the one who uh put me on to the actual location of red rock coulee that we just looked at uh and now we are looking at the hillsides of what is the picture uh, at the top, my logo of Crypto Alchemist, the face of the Badlands Guardians. Uh, sorry, it's actually this guy right here. Um, my logo, of course, being this guy. Uh, which is just down the valley, uh, probably 10 kilometers over, 5 to 10 kilometers from this guy right here. And it was this guy right here that uh, I'm going to be showing all of the next pictures of our different uh, sides, uh, hillsides and angles of this hill. Uh, you can see the main road separating the two faces with the Quasal, I believe, the dragon headdress or snake headdress on this Aztec Mayan Olmec looking warrior guy. Uh, and that each hillside, hill face making up uh, this giant feature is completely terraced, as in terraces, uh, potentially agricultural terraces would be the purpose of it. And that is what you're looking at right here in this hillside and you can see these parallel lines going up and down every single foot and you know incline angle of uh these hillsides these parallel uh terraces everywhere and this is part of this macro terraforming that uh, created these massive uh, faces, figurines, geoglyphs from above, and that uh, at one point I would be willing to wager that uh, this was all used as agricultural terracing. And from my uh, brief conversation with the 
um, current rancher farmer owners of this property, uh, they definitely are not responsible for it. They do not uh, use it. Uh, they barely, uh, you know, even traverse it, yet alone uh, plow it or try to uh, farm it other than just for cattle grazing. And when I was there in mid-June, which is actually uh, Alberta's rainy season uh, this year, it was so dry in June still that he was uh, afraid of uh, wildfire breaking out. And uh, thus I wasn't able to explore more of the site than what uh, I did here. But as we continue, you can see every single uh, surface, every single um, incline and angle of these massive hill features have these parallel lines, these uh, parallel uh, terraces. Uh, how high are the ridges? I would say at least a couple hundred feet, if not... Uh, well, yeah, probably at least one, at least a couple hundred. Each one of those is a, uh, each terrace, each parallel line is about a meter uh, on average. I didn't measure them at the time, but uh, that would be my best estimate uh, from what I saw while I was there. And yeah, from bottom to top, maybe even a, uh, few hundred. Uh, yeah, so the terraces, uh, some were about a foot and some were a meter. It was weird, depending on the hill. Um, the smaller hills, now that I think about it, were about a foot. The bigger ones had them at about a meter. Um, and as you can see, just over and over and over, every single which way on them, and this would be extremely ancient um, terraforming or construction and that uh, it still remains today, uh, to this day, as I guess a testimony to just how incredible this work really is. Oops going too far here we go we can see from another angle uh another hill face on it uh terraces down just everywhere and this is just a small sampling uh of the pictures that i have and of the hills there uh of it uh still will be doing uh full length uh features on this uh, going over all of the evidence and the material the pictures video uh, content that i've collected and uh, got this summer oh yeah no definitely isaac they would not be using farm equipment on those steep inclines today uh god no like uh, you'd roll a vehicle trying to drive up these a lot of them and um let's see so right down in the middle here was like the one like path the one vehicle path uh actually it might be below the picture cut off i'm not sure either that or it's uh hidden by um foliage or something but uh yeah it was very rarely you could tell driven on and that uh, it was more uh, one half of it was used as game trail and for like the cattle and whatnot and uh, you know the tire track on the second part of uh, the trail very fairly rarely used with uh, lots of plants growing up in it you know like it hadn't been driven on in quite some time uh, and that uh, I, as I explored and uh, climbed up and down these hills, uh, making sure that it's like, oh, this isn't each single one. Definitely not uh, all animal trails, grazing trails, or anything.